Hey everyone, let's talk about portfolio management. Let's say that we've got a portfolio of five stocks and we want to add one without changing some of our prior positions and therefore reduce some others to make room for it. So let's say we've got this uh, example here where we've got the FANG stocks roughly equal weighted and let's say that we want to add Tesla to these. Of course, it means that something is going to have to get reduced, but let's say we want to actually make sure that only Google and Netflix are reduced and everything else stays the same. Firstly, once we've got the original portfolio with the FANG stocks loaded up in PRTU, let's go to Port. So you can just, from PRTU, choose Analyze, and that'll take you to Port. Now once there, let's go to Trade Simulation and Launch Optimizer. And this will be the algorithm that we're actually going to use to generate the trades. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that our new allocation to, let's say Tesla, is optimal. And let's say that by that we mean optimal in terms of mean variance trade-offs. So the Port Optimizer can do this for us if we, for goals, choose to maximize rather than risk, we'll choose to maximize the sharp ratio. Now the trick here is going to be to tell the optimizer what stocks it should trade, that is to say Google and Netflix, and which ones it should leave alone, which is to say everything else, when making room for Tesla in our new mean variance optimized portfolio. So to do that, we're going to proceed in three steps in defining the trade universe and which parts of it can be traded which way. First, let's say that our current portfolio consisting of all of those five FANG stocks is going to be a no buy list. That's because we don't want to increase any of our current positions. Now we're going to have to give it the list of securities we want to add or remove and another list of securities that we're going to want to leave alone. And both of these we can do using worksheets. So if we go to another screen and let's say that we launch our worksheet command the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new worksheet and you can choose basic that's sufficient for our purposes click create and you end up with an empty spreadsheet now what we're going to want to do we can either enter the names of securities manually. So, for example, if we wanted to add Tesla to this position, we could say TSL, and that gets us enough to actually enter the ticker for Tesla. Or what we can do is we can actually import an existing portfolio. So let's do that. We'll take our existing portfolio, make sure to select off for sync to source and say import to worksheet. Now you see that our five FANG stocks are in here and now we can choose what worksheet we want this one to represent. So let's say that this one's going to be the ones that we want to leave alone. So if we want to change our positions in Google and Netflix in order to make room for Tesla. That means that we want to not touch Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. So that means that all we really need to do is just to drop Google and Netflix from the worksheet. Now worksheets are automatically saved 
So if we go back, we've got now this new worksheet. It's got the rather prosaic name of new worksheet, but we can give it a better name such as no trade. So these securities will be ones that we will tell the optimizer not to touch. Now analogously, let's create another list of the securities that we want the optimizer to actually change. So we again go to create new worksheet, basic, and we'll again want to import our portfolio. Again, remember, don't sync to source. So this time what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to delete the three stocks that we don't want it to trade. We want to trade these two and we want to add another row for the new position that we want to take. And remember this new position we want it to take in Tesla. So let's just start typing the ticker TS. And that's sufficient. There is Tesla. So again, worksheets are automatically saved. You go back and there it is. Now let's say that we're going to call this one rather than new worksheet. Let's call it the trade. Now remember what have we created? The no trade worksheet contains positions in, or just the names actually, of Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Those are the ones that we want to not change in our current portfolio. And the trade worksheet consists of the two positions that we wanted to change, Google and Netflix, and the position that we wanted to add in Tesla. So, now let's actually add these lists to our optimizer. So if you go to Add and then Security Worksheets, you can actually see that the ones we've created just now have been automatically added. So let's take the trade list consisting of Google, Netflix, and Tesla, and we're going to make that the trade list. And let's also add another security worksheet, the no trade list we will select as that rule. So now what have we done? We've said that our entire portfolio of five stocks, none of them are going to be buys. Simultaneously we've said that a list of Google, Netflix, and Tesla are going to be either buys or sells according to the trade list. However, those two combined, no buy on Google and Netflix, combined with trade on Google and Netflix, means that the only option for the optimizer is to sell Google and Netflix, whereas it could actually either buy or sell Tesla. Simultaneously, the no trade list containing Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Well, that one is already on the no buy list, but now it's also on the no trade list, meaning it can't be either bought or sold. So the optimizer shouldn't touch any of those positions. That pretty much sets up our trade universe. So we should be limited to just one buy in Tesla and two sells in Google and Netflix. Now, as far as constraints, we may want to, just to sort of avoid trading costs, uh, limit our turnover. So let's say that the current uh, constraint on maximum portfolio turnover being 20% of the portfolio, maybe that's a little low since we only have five stocks. Let's say we want to limit it to 30% of the portfolio. Now for sharp ratio optimization to work, we have to give it an expected return. So let's say that we'll take a historical uh, longer run average of about 7%. And 
And the last thing that we may want to add is how much we actually want to take in Tesla. Uh, let's say that our comfort uh, zone for positions in Tesla is going to be anywhere between 0% and 4%. Now we have our optimizer all configured in terms of goals, list of stocks to be traded, constraints, and properties. So now we should be able to just run and have it tell us uh, just how we can actually optimally add a position in Tesla to our existing portfolio of FANG stocks. As expected, uh, we only have one buy, so the optimizer suggests we do indeed buy Tesla. So our construction of the trade universe seems to have worked. What it suggests we do is we buy two shares of Tesla. And you can see that this is actually within our tolerated range of portfolio weights. Uh, remember we asked for the optimizer to give us a range in Tesla of 0 to 4% of portfolio weight, and it's got given us 1.21%. Uh, and how does it suggest we fund this? Well, it says that what we should do is we should sell only one of the two stocks that we had put up for consideration. Remember, we said Google or Netflix based on mean variance optimization it suggests that we sell Netflix and we sell 16 shares of that and that reduces our weight in Netflix from 15 to 10 percent. Uh, this comes at a 6 percent turnover of our total portfolio uh, size which is well within our 30 percent portfolio turnover constraint so this we would call a successful optimization. Uh, now the last thing we could do, especially if we have a longer list of buys and sells, is we can go to export trades, and that'll actually let us save these trades as an Excel spreadsheet, which we could then either enter ourselves or send to our broker. Um, Interestingly, this optimizer suggests that we only buy two shares of Tesla and then park the rest of the money in a money market account. Uh, and all of that total sum comes from our selling of 16 shares of Netflix. So this output we could just save and either save for ourselves for manual trade entry or programmatic trade entry or submission to a broker for third-party trade execution. So this is how you can create a new position using a mean variance optimizer in an existing uh, set of stocks. Thanks for watching.